So you want to build a Ford C6 to handle your beautifully built big block 460 that makes a thousand plus horsepower. It's not really that difficult. The difficult part for us home builders is finding the information on exactly what parts you need and or parts you don't need. What parts will swap, what parts don't swap. So we're going to get into that and see if I can't clear this up and hopefully make a video to where you don't have to search all over the internet to find what you need. Alright, I figured we'd start at the rear of the transmission first and kind of work our way forward. Your low reverse hub on your C6 is identical to the E4OD, the only exception being is the drain holes are elongated. They use the same race and the 4R100's entirely different, we'll get to that in a minute. The low reverse ring gears. Now as long as you've got a four pinion rear planet, your six piston or six six pinion your six pinion rear planet will fit into the stock C6 ring gear. The only difference between the reverse ring gears is the distance there, which has a little bit more meat to go into the back of the transmission for better support. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. Oh, and no bearing. Uh, the reverse planets. Uh, the E4OD and the C6 are identical. They're the exact same thing. And then the 4R100 diesel, which is your steel six pendant, which is what you need, is different. The sun shells. The sun shells are entirely different. <clears throat> the E4OD, the 4R100 are identical. Your gears will not interchange with the C6. They will interchange with each other because they're the same thing. And the six, and the six gear rear planet will go on the back of the E4OD gas transmission sun shell. They're the exact same thing, so the parts will interchange no problem. Uh, the Ford planets. The Ford planets are different. Your Ford C6, three pinion, four pinion, E4OD, and then the one that you really need, which is the six pinion steel diesel. The Ford, Ford clutch hubs are different. The E4OD and the 4R100 are identical. They're the exact same thing. The C6 is entirely different. The front ring gear will interchange between both of these. They're the same thing. With the exception of where the bearing rides. This surface is different than your E4OD gas. It's beveled for the bearing and normally when you buy your uh, Ford Planet diesel Ford Planet it comes with that so you can swap it into your stock gear if you have it but it will not fit into the C6 so you will need one out of the E4OD or 4R100 and this bearing is specific to your Ford Planet for the diesel version and you have to buy that and that's like 40 bucks, 30 bucks, somewhere in there. Shipped. The E4OD and the C6 have a 16 element sprag. And your 4R100 has a 17 element sprag. And what that means...
this is the C6 E4OD, which is 3.2 diameter. Your 4R100 is 3.4 diameter. Which is slightly bigger. And they will not interchange. Now, when you normally put this in your rear, in your transmission, you put your gear in, you put this on, and then you slide the ring on. Well, if you use the 4R100, you put this in, and then that just sits right on top of it, and you don't need your snap ring. And it does bolt in just like it's supposed to. The main problem with the C6 is in the rear of the transmission. That's where most of the heat and friction from the transmission come from. On your one-way inner clutch race, all the forward momentum and the weight of the internal parts is on this bushing. And that came out of a running vehicle. Running and shifting. And on deceleration, it's on your parking all. This bushing right here sets in a case like this. On deceleration, this bushing takes all of the heat and the friction of all the internal weight, uh, the internal weight of the parts. So it causes this bushing to wear out. Most of the heat and friction come from the rear of the transmission, which is why when you upgrade it, you should get a roller bearing parking all. That's Kate takes care of that problem. And that's like 120 bucks for that. And then when you do the six pinion upgrade. And you change your one one way inner race to the bearing style then you eliminate that friction and that's the main friction in the transmission which will help greatly in it now your one way inner race this is the e4od and this is the c6 it's the exact same thing the only difference is it's slightly narrower than that to account for the bearing incidentally the bearing that goes on your one-way inner race is the exact same bearing for the uh, E4OD and the 4R100. So, it's the exact same thing. So that interchanges. The bushings on your rear planet are entirely different. You have to buy these. That's like another 30 bucks. When I bought my six pin, six pinion, six gear pinion kit, I got this half here forward without the bushings, without the bearing. That cost me 347 shipped. If I wanted to use the rear pinion, you got to use this cage with it, 24 lug. That's another 40 bucks. And then you got to change your clutches. And that's another 60. They're like $11 a piece or something like that. And then you got to get the rear inner one way race. And that's another 40 bucks. And like I said, the rear, uh, uh, parking all, rollerized parking all is 120. So, what parts do you need and what don't you need? Well, a lot of the race car guys will tell you you don't need the rear six piston planet. A lot of the racing guys will tell you you don't need the rear planet. You, it, it just, that's what they say. But I got it. I'm going to put it in. What you do need is your front planet. Because it's steel and it's not going to strip out. And that's what handles the majority of the torque in the transmission. Your forward clutches in the C6 and the E4OD are identical. They're 100% the same. Five clutches. Splines all the way through. They even have the exact same number on the piston. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Just pick the one that's in the best shape. Use that. Your direct clutch 
C6 is what you have to use. You can't use your E4OD or the 4R100 because they are made for a engine braking sprag and clutch set that goes on here. So if you try to use it, it will physically fit, but if you try to use it, your band will hang off the end of quarter inch. And you might as well save the money and go ahead and buy you one that's already had the groove cut in it so you can put your your uh, uh, five clutches in it or six clutches or whatever you want. That's the easiest way to do it. Now when it comes to doing your servo upgrade, you want to stay with the superior version of it. Your TCI version and the Sonics version, for whatever reason, the shafts are slightly larger in diameter. I guess they made it for case wear, which it doesn't usually have a whole lot of case wear. So you want to stay with the superior version and avoid that problem altogether. And that's like 138 bucks. That ain't too bad. And as far as valve body, I'm going with a broader performance reverse manual valve body. So I don't have to worry about line pressure. I don't have to worry about the governor. I can shift it at any RPM I want into any gear I want. So as long as I don't screw up, the transmission should last for a while. <clears throat> so with this, I can either leave the governor in and the modulator in, or I can take it out. It doesn't matter because they do zero now. This controls the line pressure and the shifting, which is nice. And seeing how all of mine was in good shape, I'm going to probably leave the governor in it, take out one snap ring on the rear shaft, and probably just leave the modulator in it just to plug up the hole. <clears throat> now the rebuild kit I got was I had the steels and the alto clutches. That was like 347. And I decided to get a wide band and get rid of the narrow band. That was another 50 bucks. Got the deep transmission pan from Trick Flow. That was like 140, 160, somewhere there. Bushings, bushing kit, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. Makes a difference. Now, a lot of people will take all this. Oh. And the Racetech converter. Uh, anti bloom plates, 3800 stall, 10 inch. It's like $800. Now, I've heard a lot of different things when it comes to the broader performance reverse full manual valve body, or just full manual valve body entirely. In the low reverse piston, they call to drill a hole from 20 to 40 thousandths. And from what I've heard and read, some people say do it, some people say don't do it, whatever. Personally, I believe, from what I understand, that it's from, has to do with the uh, uh, engine braking that the broader performance valve body incorporates. So, drill it or not drill it, I guess it's up to you. But if you do drill it, mm, location like that's just perfectly fine. Your forward planet will swap to the E4OD gas. The rear planet will swap in all three as long as the C6 rear planet is a four pin. Now I've got about three thousand dollars in this transmission so far. About two to four hundred of it is probably mistakes, lack of knowledge, stuff I don't need. Um, I've already cut my sun shell down, which wasn't too difficult. All I did is just use a bench grinder, cut it down, put it in the vise. Took a whole 10 minutes, so it wasn't too difficult. Now, a lot of people also say that you should fully rollerize the transmission. I think that money is better spent elsewhere. Um, and the transmissions that I've rebuilt back in the day, which was quite a few, didn't see a whole lot of problems with the, the bushings. Usually they're pretty good. The clutches always go before that or something more catastrophic. Uh, there's usually not a whole lot of wear. So 
I guess it's a personal choice. If you want to spend that kind of money to fully rollerize it, just to rollerize it, go ahead. Um, I don't see the need to. Uh, the car is going to be driven at best twice a week if I'm lucky. Uh, I just don't see the need to do it. So spend your money how you want to. Or just go out and buy a transmission, completely rebuild it if you want to, that's built for the power that you are hopefully going to make. If you got the money to do it, do it. If not, it takes three, four months like I did to build it up nice and slow. That way you know exactly what's in the transmission and if something goes wrong with it, you've got a really good idea of what's wrong. And hopefully, you know, you can troubleshoot that on the side of the road. Other than that, I hope this video helped you out. I hope some of the information is relevant to what you're doing. And I hope it incorporates all the knowledge that I found all over the interwebs and talking with other transmission builders and other people that have done this specifically. Thank you.